In this lesson, we're going to be finding the perimeter and area of a variety of polygons. The perimeter is the distance around the edge of the polygon, or the two-dimensional shape, and it's found by adding the sides together. The area of the polygon is how much space it takes up, and it is found by multiplying. We multiply different things depending on what the shape is, so we'll get more into detail with area with each example. We're going to start off with a square. Now, a square is a four-sided figure, that has four right angles and four equal sides. Since the sides are all equal, they can all be labeled x. So our perimeter would be x plus x plus x plus x, which we can rewrite as perimeter is equal to 4x. The area is found by multiplying one side by the adjacent side. So all our vertical versus times all our horizontal, which would be x times x or x squared. So the area of a square is x squared or side squared. Next, we're going to work with a rectangle. Like a square, it has four right angles, but as opposed to having four equal sides, it has opposite sides are of equal length, but adjacent sides are of different length. So our perimeter is going to be h plus b plus h plus b, h being height and b being base. So we get a perimeter of 2b plus 2h. Now to find the area, we're going to multiply the height times the base, the vertical times the horizontal, and we're going to get that the area is equal to BH. Next, we're going to look at a parallelogram. The parallelogram is like a rectangle in that opposite sides are of equal length and adjacent sides are of differing lengths, but rather than having right angles, it has skewed angles, like someone pushed it over a little bit. So to find the perimeter, we're going to add our base, plus our side, the diagonal side, plus our base times our side to get a perimeter of 2b plus 2s. To find the area, we have the same equation as for a rectangle. Area equals base times height. The height is a line drawn from one base to the other base, perpendicular to the two bases. I've drawn it with a green dotted line. Now if you look at the green dotted line to the left, it creates a triangle off to the left. If we were to take that triangle from the parallelogram, cut it off, and put it on the other side so that our diagonal lines lined up, it would be within the bounds of the two dotted lines to the right. So you can see within the bounds of the dotted lines, we have a rectangle. So it makes sense that our area is the same as for a rectangle. Next, we are going to look at a trapezoid. Now, a trapezoid has two base lengths, b sub 1 and b sub 2. And our bases are parallel to each other, but they're of different lengths. Our sides are of the same length, our diagonal sides, but they are not parallel. So to find the perimeter, we're going to add our side plus base of 1 plus side plus base of 2. So perimeter is base of 1 plus base of 2 plus 2 side. To find the height, we're going to drop a line from base of 1 to b sub 2, and we get that perpendicular height right there that's the dotted green line. And our area is going to be the average of our two bases times the height. So to find the average of our two bases, we add b sub 1 to b sub 2 and divide it by 2. So area is b sub 1 plus b sub 2 over 2 times h. Now we have a triangle. To find the perimeter of a triangle, we're going to assume that our three sides are different, so we get perimeter is x plus y plus z. Now to find the area of a triangle, again we're going to need to find our height. So I'm going to draw the height in right now. And to get the height, you pick one vertice or one angle and drop a line straight from that to the side opposite it. So we get a perpendicular line from the base up to the opposite angle. And that is our height. Now, I have that the area is base times height over 2, which can also be interpreted as 1 half base times height. Now, base times height was the area for our parallelogram and our rectangle. And if I draw in a second triangle, you can see this second triangle that's the same size as our first triangle, and they share line z, forms together to create a parallelogram. And we could cut off the 
triangle to the left and put it to the right and get another rectangle. So you can see a triangle is half of a rectangle or half of a parallelogram. So it makes sense that the area would be one half times base times height. Next we're going to look at an irregular polygon. So with this particular irregular polygon we have two sides that are unknown. Now to find our perimeter we're going to add up all the sides. So we get 5 plus 6 plus 2 plus 4 plus x plus y. And to find x and y, because we have all these right angles, we know we also have parallel lines. So we can see that x plus 4 is parallel to, and the two together are going to be equal to, our side that is 6. So we plug in our equation x plus 4 equals 6, we get that x is equal to 2. Now we're going to do the same thing to find y. So y right here plus 2 those two add up to, and are parallel to our side over here, 5. So we get the equation y plus 2 is equal to 5, and we solve to find that y is equal to 3. So our perimeter is 5 plus 6 plus 2 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2, or 22. So we have a perimeter of 22. Now to find the area, what we're going to do is we're going to create some new shapes in here. We have this sort of L shape happening right now. And if we were to drop a line and turn our L into two rectangles, we know how to find the area of a rectangle. So we are going to take area of base times height, or 5 times x, and area of base times height, or 4 times 2, and add these two areas together. And we know that x from our previous perimeter problem is 2, so we get 5 times 2 plus 4 times 2, which is 10 plus 8, which is 18. So we have an area of 18 in this irregular polygon. Now, we're going to deal with one more area problem. Let's say we have a circle that's circumscribed inside a square. We've inscribed it into the square. We're going to find the area of the square not covered by the circle, which is going to be our blue portion in this diagram. Now we can see that we have 8 labeled on the one side of the square, so we know all the sides of the square are 8, and we know our circle has a diameter of 8 because the, diam the circle hits the edges of the square, so a line going straight through the center of the circle would be 8. That means our radius is half the diameter, half of 8 is 4. To find the area of a square, we're going to multiply the sides together, so it'll be side squared, and the area of a circle is pi r squared, and we just figured out r, our radius, is 4. And to find the area of the blue part, we're going to take the area of the square and subtract the area of the black circle. So we plug in our numbers. We get that 8 squared minus pi times 4 squared is their area. And then we simplify that to get 64 minus 16 pi. Now, you can leave it as this with the area in terms of pi. If you wanted to expand it further so that you had a better mental concept of what it was, uh, you could substitute 3.14 as an approximation for pi. So we would get 64 minus 50.24 is, is excuse me, 13.76. So our area is either 64 minus 16 pi or about 13.76. And for area, we're going to use unit squared because we have two dimensions. So it would be meters squared, or inches squared, or centimeters squared. Whereas with our perimeter, because we're only dealing in one dimension going around a line that's been bent, we would just use plain inches or meters or centimeters.